Okay, I've never looked at myself as a professional fighter until now. I never looked at myself, you know what, I'm going to be a professional fighter, I'm going to fight for money. I've always wanted to do other things, but fighting just kept coming along. It's just the opportunity kept arising beyond, beyond my control. I was fortunate enough to be influenced in a very intimate environment, friendship, with some of the best fighters in the world, from Hickson Gracie to Rob Common and so on. I mean, these are like incredible fighters from Olympic wrestling. So I found myself at the age of 45 with so much knowledge from such great masters that uh, I'm curious, how can I, how will I do, how will I, you know, how, how good am I against the best, you know, all around fighters in the world? It's not that I wanted to fight again. I'm presented here with an exceptional opportunity. I don't know why, you know, if you, if you believe in gods and the spirits and destiny, whatever, whatever, whatever your philosophy may be, I came to the conclusion, at 45 I have an exceptional gift, that I just may be able to become the world's, you know, champion in mixed fighting. It's a gift. I cannot say it's something that I specific deserve or whatever, it's something that is given to me. Now. I want to take this gift and I want to do something with it because I see the opportunities that it will bring to me. I'm not fighting because I just love to fight. I don't really love to fight. I don't like to fight. I never, I don't like to hurt people. And if you watch my fights, you'll see that I don't, I've never fight with the intention of hurting people. I fight with the intention of winning. I want to do it noble. I want to show courage and I want to give people a good show. But I'm not in there thinking that I'm going to go over there and beat the hell out of my opponent. I'm going to go, I'm going to hurt him, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. No. As a matter of fact, I usually like my opponents. They're usually very, you know, decent people and, and I've been good friends with them. There is another aspect to this, which I'm trying to implement in my life. dealing with our fears, walking into the ring, it brings all your instincts are on fire, you, 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 you're awake, I mean, you, you're shaking. How can I bring that kind of intensity to that serene level that I'm going to go and face my opponent like I'm going to have a cup of coffee. Be complete in the moment, believe in the spirits, believe in God, believe in myself, and let it take its own course. Whatever happened, let it happen. All I want to know is I faced my opponent, and I faced my fears, and I didn't lose my control, that I was there and I've done my job. Whether I got beat or whether I won, I tried to put that as a secondary, as a secondary thought, it's, just, it's irrelevant. I know it doesn't, but you know, I try to put that into a mind, it doesn't matter. You're not going in there to win. You're not going in there to lose. You're going in that ring for one and one reason only. Deal with your fears. Learn how to control that kind of intensity. Does that make any sense? Because we all going to deal with, uh, what's the word, ad ad adversa advers adversaries in our lives. It's how we deal with them. I mean, the more, and this is not my philosophy. This is something that I really picked up from uh, Plutarch, one of my favorite authors. He wrote a book called The Nine Lives. It's, it's a classic. And uh, Plutarch was a writer, uh, he, was, he wrote in Greek, he was Greek, but he lived during the Roman, 
the Roman, 2,000 years ago during the Roman e Empire. And he took the nine most influential uh, personages of the time and he described their characters. And one of those personages was Alexander the Great. Now bear in mind that Alexander the Great's tutor, teacher was uh, Aristotle. Alexander the Great constantly tried to find opportunities to deal with his fears. In one situation, he, uh, he was fighting in India, and he had something like 250,000 opponents in front of him. And I don't know exactly what happened, but he was separated by, he, by, his, uh, by his soldiers' opponents. And what does Alexander do? He charges. His opponents backed off. They didn't quite know what's going on. They figured his army had to be behind him. He gave me that extra, extra minute, that, that little extra time for his soldiers to come. 45 is the age of recklessness for many men, as if in defiance of the decay and death, waiting with open arms in the sinister valley. Well, most of my friend is really, you know, very instinctive. Some, some is not like I have a, like I have a schedule. I some days I wake up and uh, I'm in a certain state of mind. Some days I wake up and I'm more tired than other days. Um, it's not a day-to-day -day thing. It's more of a long-term agenda, which is discipline and do my homework to improve on the technique, my fighting technique, try to improve on, uh, you know, on my, uh, how to strengthen the body, explosiveness, uh, endurance, and all those things. But, but the basic goal is I want to be a better fighter. And I still believe that I have a... I don't even want to put a timetable how much longer I can improve on, but all I know is at this specific time of my life, at 45, almost 46, I'm still improving. And I'm also entering that age where I have to really detail everything from my diet to my rest to the state of mind that I'm in. How do you deal with pain? You know, it's motivation. You're motivated to achieve something, so you don't even think about pain, really. Uh, I'm not, I never think of pain. Pain doesn't really exist. You just, if you, if you have an injury, you work around it. And as a fighter, you're always going to have an injury. You're always going to have some kind of, like, a knee joint or an elbow joint or a pull muscle or something or a bad back and you just work around it like uh, if your back is hurting you do something that is not going to put a lot of stress on it if your knee is hurting you're going to do something that is not going to put a lot of stress on it uh, you have to know your body you have to know I mean you don't want to injure your body because pain it's also a guidance that lets you know how far you can push yourself so, but as far as you specifically talking about pain when I'm fighting, when I get hit, you don't feel it. It's something I cannot explain. I don't know if it's inherited, like it's given, but when I fight, I don't feel the pain. I don't feel the punches. You have a, you have a goal. The goal is to achieve let's say a championship belt. Everything else is irrelevant. Pain doesn't exist. Tired is irrelevant. 
It's all about discipline, staying focused, and do what it takes, what kind of preparation you need to do to achieve that goal, nothing else. Stay focused and disciplined. And, uh, and, and after that, whatever uh, the cards would reveal, they would reveal. I can't give anybody advice for pain. It's something that I cannot talk to anybody else. It's, it's something that is it's a, it's a personal thing. You have to know yourself. You have to know your body. You know your body, and then you make up your choice. Is this pain going to be a long-term injury? Then I stop. I have to have come, enough common sense and say, you know what? I'm going to hurt myself, and I'm going to be out of training for four or five months if I don't stop right now, because I know this pain is going to be a long-term injury. And sometimes I know it's just something in the muscle is just burning, or you know you got popped, uh, you got you know you, you got a bruise, and you say you know what I'm just going to go through it. You just put it out of your mind. And for whatever reason, I got a very very strong tolerance, high tolerance for pain. I, again, I cannot explain that. I don't know if it's something that I inherited from our forefathers. It's just something that is inbred in me. Or uh, because I've been dealing, I've been beaten, you know, basically I've been fighting all my life, and I got used to it. How do I deal with a broken heart? Just take long rides and listen to sad music. Very few people really ever fight. Why do you fight? It's the only thing I can do well. It's the only thing that I absolutely believed since the day I was born that I can be as good as anybody else. There was no doubt in my mind I could compete with the very best as a fighter. It was just something that I believed I can do. Uh, simple as that. I don't fight because of any other reason. It's just I want to be good at somebody. I think we all want to be good at something. To be special, to be treated special, to, to that's, that's my stage, to, to get on, and to get into the ring and uh, show what I'm capable of doing. It's all about respect. Why do I fight? It's the only thing I'm good at. I mean, since, ever since I can remember, I mean, as far as I can go back in my youth, in my memory, I've always believed I can be as good as anybody else in fighting. So, and at 45, I'm con I still believe I'm, I can be the best fighter in the world. And as long as I believe that, I have to make an attempt and find out it cannot do it. That's it. I mean, it would be it would be so sad if, you know, I'm 70 years old and uh, you know sitting there says, yeah, I could have done this and I could have done that. I could have been great at this, but never done anything. That would be that would be sad. I gotta do it. I gotta fight. God. The first fight that I've been in. You see, I remember fighting as soon as I started to walk. I mean, it was just the circumstances. I, I was put. Is, I grew up in a place that it was just a common thing that children, you know, would just fight with each other and wrestle all day long. It was a different time, it was a different era, it was a different place. Um, the first really fight I remember, I mean really fight, I was, what was I, 13 years old, I, I've just came to the United States. I couldn't speak a whole lot of English. And um, 
I got in a fight with about, I don't know, a dozen black kids. And I remember grabbing them and wrestling them to the ground, but I wasn't hurting them. And they, were, they would hit me with metal paws. They would beat me there. And I learned how to fight. That's when I really learned how to fight. That was the last time I lost a fight. It was the only time I lost a fight. And I learned how to fight. It was no longer a wrestling match. It was no longer grabbing somebody by the neck and put him to the ground in a head like and say, you know, I, I got you. It was about really doing whatever you can to survive. It was like, I mean, I was beaten up so bad. I was dripping blood. I remember going to, going to the principal's office and the other kids would see me walking on the hall and they would start screaming and little girls crying and, you know, running to their classrooms. I mean, it was, it was a fight. That was probably my most memorable fight. But, you know, it was a great lesson. Let me ask you something. Your first fight, you were 13 years old. When did you realize that maybe perhaps fighting appealed to you other than survival? Let's say that was for survival. You, you had to survive that incident. What made you think, I want to fight again? Okay, I've never looked at myself as a professional fighter until now. I never looked at myself, you know what, I'm going to be a professional fighter. I'm going to fight for money. I've always wanted to do other things, but fighting just kept coming along. It's just the opportunity kept arising beyond, beyond my control. I was fortunate enough to be influenced in a very intimate environment, friendship, with some of the best fighters in the world, from Hicks and Gracie to Rob Common and so on. I mean, these are like incredible fighters from Olympic wrestling. So I found myself at the age of 45 with so much knowledge from such great masters that uh, I'm curious, how can I, how will I do, how will I, you know, how, how good am I against the best, you know, all around fighters in the world. Fear. Everybody's afraid. There is nobody out there who's not afraid. As a matter of fact, fear is possibly our best friend. My goal is to face my fears. I want to stand up to my fears and I want to face it in a relaxed, serene manner and react to the best of my ability. And then study how do I react and go back to my drone board and see how can I improve on making it better the next time. Fear. Everybody's afraid. If anybody tells you they're not afraid of anything, they're lying. I'll go even farther than that. I'm going to tell you that my fears are my best friends. My goal is to face my fears and deal with them and face them. And the funny thing, not, not funny, uh, it's probably one of the most satisfying feelings you can achieve when you overcome a fear. I mean, that's a, that, 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 that's a character building. And you get used to it, you get used, you know, when you're afraid, all this energy, you know, you got all these instincts, you know, they're alive, they're driving you, and you learn how to control them, you use them to your advantage. When we don't know how to use all those instincts, we get intimidated by them, we overreact or underreact. The goal is to be right there, you're afraid, but you deal with it, you don't back off and have the balls to say, you know what, I'm afraid I'm going to stand up to my fear and I don't give a fuck what's going to happen, I'm going to deal with it. 
And everybody, it doesn't have to be, af- you don't have to walk into the ring to be afraid. People are afraid of a zillion things. They're afraid of women. We're afraid of women. We're afraid of heights. We're afraid of death. There's so many things that we're afraid of. Everybody has his own fears. Deal with your fears. Play with your fears. Do not let them intimidate you. The more you deal with them, the more I'm capable of dealing with that, you know, with that kind of energy. And that's why one of the reasons I go to the ring, inside the ring, that's why I'm, I want to, because walking to the ring, you're afraid. You're, it's not fear. I don't, I don't, I, fear is an instinct. It, when I walk to the, that fear is like, oh my, it's, it's like, in a way, my instincts are telling me, they're waking me up. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I'm being pumped up right before I go over there. It's just, that's not fear. I feel it, it's, I don't like the word fear. 15 minutes before I go into the ring. What am I thinking? A beautiful sunset. A smile, a smile over a gorgeous woman. Maybe a nice ass. No, just kidding. <laughs> I'm really medi- meditating and relaxing. I'm speaking to God, I'm speaking to my father. Come on. No, really, I'm, I'm speaking to my father. That's what I'm doing. I'm saying, you know what, Holy Father, I'm going into the ring to face you. My opponent is God himself. I'm coming there to face you. Let's dance. Let it be. What, what's going to happen? I'm going to get a black arm, I'm going to get a broken arm. It happened before. It's nothing new. Just take it. Breathe. Breathing is also a very important thing. What separates the masters from everybody else is their breathing. Breathing relaxes you. When I walk into that ring, I want to be so tuned up with my opponent that I become one with him. I know what he's going to do before he's going to do it. And you have to do that only when you believe in the moment. And the only way you can believe in the moment is to have faith in the Holy Father, meaning that He put me on this earth and He's watching over me and He's put me in this situation. He knows better what the outcome is going to be better than I do. I have nothing to do with the outcome. My job is to be right there and react. What does my opponent do? How do I react? Relax. My enemy my enemy, my, my ego. Yeah, my biggest enemy is my ego. I'm at the point where I can, like, I have to get a little bit deeper for this question uh, in order to make to put it into the right content. At this point in my life, I'm completely convinced that this is not Stephanus, that you look in, that I'm seeing. Stephanus is connected. He's connected to all his forebears, all his every single man before him, from sperm to sperm to sperm to sperm, from generation from generation from generation, I exist. Here I am. Their instincts are their voices and their guidance. It's an incredible connection. The more I'm aware of that connection and I let be, be, be the, get all the ego out of the way, just really be, be sincere, just say exactly what I feel, be the real me. I'm fantastic, I'm fucking unbelievable, I love myself, only, I can only achieve that maybe a split of a second in a, every so rare. Most of the time, my now, this 
what I called ego, is what throws me off. It's when I try too hard to, to force things. So my, it's my biggest enemy. I don't want to force things. I want to be in the moment. I want to be right there. You don't force or you don't pull. You're just moving in the moment, not just in the ring, but as a man in every relationship, in everything that I do in life, I want to be that tuned up with, with who I really am. That you ask me, you just ask me a question, who are you? The real stuff is just all the men before me and all the men hopefully after me. That's the real stuff. Right now I'm just a shadow. I'm just holding that link and I'm walking on a type road. Well, see, that's, I have a big problem when I talk to people about these things because they think I'm probably the most violent man in the world because, again, I told you two years ago that I view life as a battlefield. Well, I'm convinced of that thought right now. Life is a battlefield. That's what we're here for. And I'm not talking just fighting on the ring. I'm not talking, everybody have their own fight, but we are all here and we're all warriors and we're all fighting and we're all gonna die. Because it takes one hell of a courageous person or animal to, to die, man. But I'm digressing, Let me, let's go back to the question. I said two years ago, I told you two years ago, that life was a battlefield. Right? Two years ago, I told you life was a battlefield. And you're asking me right now if I still believe in that philosophy, yes. I How do. do you view life? I view life as a battlefield. That doesn't mean I always act like it. Unfortunately. Well, what kind of hobbies do I have? Well, see, I've never had a job. I've always had habits. I make a point that I make a living with my habits. Because it takes an incredible amount of passion to be good at anything. Forget about talent and everything. It takes passion. It takes drive. You got to go to sleep thinking about it. You got to be dreaming about it. You got to want it worse than anything in your life. That your whole life depends on achieving a certain goal. That's passion. You got to be burning with desire. All, all my habits are acting. Other than acting. Fighting. Other than fighting. Reading. Okay. Writing. These are my main habits. Every day I try to get a little better at all these things because, you know, just incredible habits. And I'm so, so fortunate to be in a place that, I mean, my God, the, the talent uh, that exists in this town, the freedom that exists in this town, that I can just totally do what I want to do. I mean, it's, it's, I mean I, I don't, it's just amazing that uh, there is a country like the United States of America, that there is a Los Angeles, California, that there is a Hickson Gracie right here around the corner and Rob Cayman down there, that there, that there is a Joanne Barron, uh, my acting coach, that there is Hollywood and there is you sitting over there filming on all these things. And I, can be here, and I can be here. How do I view of, how do I view of fear? You see, I don't be, I have a different definition for fear. It's just an energy that needs to be controlled. We all have it. Get used to it. 
you have a fear, stand up and deal with your fear and get used to that kind of energy so you can deal under those circumstances. You cannot succeed unless you know how to deal with that energy. And you have, you have to go through it. But when you do, it's addictive. Really. At a certain time, you will be addicted to fear. We can kind of live, but I've got to say something, I'm going to keep saying till I get it. Where do I see myself in uh, 20 years? As a happy father, a family man, raising some good kids, setting up a, a great example for them. Maybe have a few grandchildren now uh, in 20 years, that's not going to happen. But uh, I think that's the ultimate happiness, man. Having a good family and, uh, you know, I'm stretching it. It's becoming a little bit uh, too late for me, but I got to get on the ball and uh, get a family going.